we live in this 20th century and the 21st century. That these are the times of fancier houses but broken homes. <laughs> These are the times of fancier houses but broken homes. These are the times of double incomes and more divorces. These are the times of high-rise buildings but low-rise characters. These are the times of broader highways but narrower viewpoints. These are the times where man has gone all the way to the moon and has come back. But he finds it difficult to cross the road and meet the new neighbor. These are the times of certain steep profits and businesses but shallow relationships. In short, it has been summed up as these are the times where we have much to show in the show window and nothing in the stock room. Matlab dikhane ke liye hamare paas bahut sari cheeze hain. लेकिन मन में शुभ भावनाएं, बुद्धि में पवित्र विचार, वो कम होते जा रहे हैं। And that is why you'd be surprised to know that more than 30,000 scientists all over the world are working 12, 15, and 18 hours a day in their laboratories to make weapons of mass destruction, to make missiles, to make bombs. 30,000 scientists. The people who make bombs and missiles and weapons of mass destruction are not illiterate people. They are graduates from universities and some of them, some of the finest institutions in the world. So they had the best of knowledge from the best of institute, but they did not enlighten their minds so as to energize human life. They had evil in their mind. Imagine if these 30,000 scientists that worked together during the Corona times, they could have relieved us much earlier. But they did not. But they did not. And they can't. And they never will. Because their mind is not enlightened. Their mind is full of evil. How well we can kill humans quickly is the principal motto of their work. 30,000 scientists. So it is a must. It is a necessity that every human being enlightens his mind so as to become more human, so as to become more moral, so as to become more spiritual. That enlightenment is needed. Every human being. On a fine Sunday morning like this, a gentleman was reading a newspaper and he must have got interested in a couple of stories on that day. And his little seven, eight year old boy said that you promised me a bat and you did not fetch one for me. The whole week passed like this. And dad said, my son, I'm sorry. Tomorrow, Monday morning, the first job I'm doing is getting you a cricket bat. He said that you said this last Sunday as well. Dad said, I'm sorry. And still the little boy was harassing his dad. And now this gentleman was interested in a couple of stories in the newspaper on that Sunday morning and had a cup of coffee besides him. So he was just relaxing. So he like thought that how can I engage this little boy so that he doesn't harass me. He looked around. Saw a piece of paper A4 size on which a world map was printed. So he like got an idea. He picked up that and showed it to the little boy. See, this is a world map. Now the eight-year-old boy, he hasn't studied geography. He, does, he, he, he has never seen a world map. He said, fine dad, okay. If you say it's a world map, okay, it's a world map. See, this is India. You look carefully. Now I'm going to Tear it into small pieces, shuffle it and give it to you. You are supposed to get me back the whole world map using a cello tip. And if you get it back, I will give you a bat right away. And the child, because he had boasted in front of his friends that today afternoon we have a cricket match and I'm going to play this match with my own bat. And for an eight-year-old boy to have his own cricket bat in a match 
is a like credit and it's a pride so he jumped upon this challenge his dad showed him see this is india this is china this is russia this is ukraine at least for this moment this is england <laughs> this is europe this is africa this is north america this is latin america and see now i'm tearing it into small pieces and telling so he did it shuffled it and give it give it to the little boy and the dad was confident that he is never going to come back with this job done and the condition was that he is not going to take anybody's help in the house from the family members to his surprise the little boy came back within 10 minutes dad job done dad was surprised like let me see and he saw it and the whole world map was perfectly arranged now a4 size paper into 16 small pieces shuffled well and given and well arranged by an 8 year old boy within 10 minutes is very surprising isn't it and the dad said how did you do it this is when even when i'm seeing it i just could not believe my eyes how how you doing it and the little boy said dad it was very simple see and the little boy took the paper from his dad's hand and turned it around said dad behind this was a picture of a man standing i adjusted the picture of the man and the world got adjusted on the other side <laughs> behind the world map was a picture of a man standing i turned everything around adjusted the man because an 8 year old boy can do that and the world on the other side got adjusted automatically i did not go to adjust the world don't go to adjust the world adjust yourself and your world will get adjusted <laughs> this is called enlightening your mind from the complaining mode from the criticizing mode come to contributing mode and you will start enlightening your mind you adjust yourself well and the world will get adjusted it is as simple as that otherwise 1.5 lakh people live this earth every day in 24 hours 24 hours is 86200 seconds so every 2 seconds three people live this earth we started this talk it is almost like 10 minutes that is 600 seconds that is 900 people left this earth if for some reason god decides to keep the whole focus for the next 7 days on mumbai what i mean to say is we have a very short life 70 80 years of life fight and plus minus with the grace of god and as warren buffett puts it very rightly that we feel that you are we are human beings on a short spiritual journey no we are actually spiritual beings on a very short human journey believing this is again the start of the thought process of enlightening your mind now let us talk practical what is enlightening your mind what does it actually mean what is the process the first important aspect is just because of certain short sightedness we believe more in iq perhaps a bit more in eq but very less of us has a perfect knowledge of sq iq is intelligent quotient eq is emotional quotient and sq is spiritual quotient until the 90s it was believed that people with high iq can perform can excel can contribute after the 90s it was seen in the markets and a well surveyed one that people with lesser iq but more on eq emotional quotient that is emotional intelligence that means he understands his own feelings he understands the feelings of the other person they rule over iqs because the silicon valley started and there the it people going from india they had the best of salaries 
today ranging from 40,000 USD to maybe 1.5 to dollars but you know actually who is paying them? They are just ordinary BCom graduates but these white Americans are smart managers. They are very smart managers. So they know, they know how to hire them and how to get work done from them. So people with high EQ started recruiting people with higher IQ. After the turn of the millennium, around 2005, 2006, it was found that people with high spiritual intelligence. Now when it comes to spiritual, don't feel like it's like scriptures and temples and religious places and saints. Don't get straight away to that picture. Spiritual intelligence is the ultimate intelligence. Because they found that people with spiritual intelligence can, now I am defining spiritual intelligence, they can go beyond certain human preconditions of mind. People with spiritual intelligence can go beyond certain human preconditions of mind. Go beyond certain decided upon habits of life and create a situation which can be an inspiration, which can be a source of motivation to people and generations to come. So a wonderful book has been written. I read this during the Corona times. The title of the book is Spiritual Intelligence, The Ultimate Intelligence by Dr. Ian Marshall, co-authored by Dr. Dana Zohar. Both of them are wonderfully, they surveyed like more than 3,000 successful people, 3,000 less successful people, 3,000 failures and 3,000 utter failures of life. And they come to a conclusion that these eight qualities make you a spiritually intelligent person and you can be successful and that is called enlightening of the mind. Vice versa. If you possess these eight qualities, you are a spiritually intelligent person. I would not go into the details of all these eight qualities, but just list it out for you. The eight qualities that make a person spiritually intelligent. First is flexibility. The new Harvard University definition of intelligence after about eight years of research and survey is in one line flexibility to change is intelligence how well you can see the change coming step two how well you can adjust yourself to the new change that is accepted step three how well you can flow with the new change makes you intelligent Flexibility to change is intelligence. Second quality, extreme self-awareness. What am I here for? What am I doing? What I am talking or saying? How am I expressing myself? How am I keeping my attitudes? What are my facial expressions and body language in the midst, in the midst of people? Am I supposed to speak in this gathering or not? Am I supposed to present my opinion or not? And if at all I am supposed to, in which words I must? All this self-awareness, a person never makes a private or a public mistake in life. He is a spiritually intelligent person. And they have found these qualities in high-ranking corporates as well. In high-ranking social workers as well. In high-ranking public life living people as well. He never makes a private or a public mistake. Third quality of spiritual intelligent person is an ability to face and use the suffering of life. We face it. We do face the sufferings of life. Knowingly, unknowingly. Wanting or not wanting. But still we face. But spiritually intelligent person can use the suffering of life. The top person in our country has this snack. Anything thrown at him, he can use it and convert it into a giant vote bank. Yeah, it is a neck. It is a spiritual intelligence. 
that you don't go around fighting with people you don't go around commenting on the comments you have your path charted out and you always use the stones thrown at you to make it stepping steps to grow more he is a spiritual intelligent person so the third quality in enlightening your mind is an ability to face and use the suffering of life fourth quality the author's right an ability to be inspired by vision you see something you hear something you read something and you get inspired that what can i do or how can i use it for the betterment of my mission for my work for my life and that is the real vision foundation <laughs> doctor an ability of a person to be inspired by a vision a couple of years back in a suburb in mumbai that is in malad a second year engineering student was standing at the bus stand awaiting for bus at that time he saw a young lady she must be around like 30 to 34 she was in a hurry on her scooty a small scooter she came at the bus stop to drop her little child the child must be like 4 5 years old because the school bus picking up that small child had the same stop and it so happened that she just reached the place and the school bus came in so she was like in a hurry parked the scooter picked up her little child and ran towards the bus handed this little child to the conductor and ke beta dhyan rakhna beta dekhna and take your seat this that she was like a bit worried class mein baithna theek se dhyan se sunna teacher ko last minute advices when the boy had seated on his seat just beside the window and she after the bus started had a sigh of relief chalo aaj pahunch gaye time pe warna school bus chali jati to school tak jana padta a sigh of relief this young second year engineering student saw this now if we were there what were the kind of thoughts that could enter our mind pratham vichar ye aata hai jaldi aa jana chahiye na theek time pe aa jana chahiye na <laughs> lekin we all know and you all are experienced people when it comes to this that to get the little children ready for school in the morning is a task this boy see inspired by vision can i help the situation young moms all over the country and all over the world must be facing this hardships in the in the morning when they have young kids can i help the situation this question arises in an enlightened mind not in an ordinary mind ordinary mind what does it say she must come on time if she is getting late she must take care of herself as simple as that an enlightened mind says how can i help the situation can i help the situation and he designed a software wherein the registered mobile number gets a message that the school bus is just now 10 minutes away second message now just 5 minutes away from your stop second message when the boy gets into the bus the sensor is cut and the message your boy has entered the bus when he or she the little girl the little boy sits again the registered mobile gets a message that your child has sat in the school bus the child enters the classroom and a sensor is cut and again the message the child has entered the classroom if the child raises the hand to answer a question posed by the teacher the again the sensor is cut and the message is there your child has raised the hand in the class to answer so this is for the young kids for the elders it is like infringement upon privacy <laughs> so it is for <laughs> so it is for the extremely small kids like you know toddlers and first second third standard so that the, the parents back home are relieved and they are comforted a giant it company in silicon valley got to know about this software he introduced in a couple of schools in mumbai a couple of schools in bangalore was very successful 
Now, he was just an engineering student. He did not have his company or network or system. So the Silicon Valley company decided to pick up that software. And you would be surprised to know that the deal was $70 million. $70 million the Silicon Valley paid to the second year engineering student for designing this software. This is the idea of a spiritually intelligent person. Not a normal mind. An enlightened mind. You see a situation and an enlightened, man, enla enlightened mind says, how can I help the situation? How can I better the situation? This is an enlightened mind. The fifth quality of a spiritually intelligent person or an enlightened mind is an ability to see connection between diverse things. 180 degree diagonally opposite things. Yet an enlightened man can see a connection between the two. The sixth quality is an ability to cause as little harm as possible. This is a very important quality. Sometimes we don't cause harm to anybody physically because we are enlightened citizens. Enlightened mind is a different and a higher level from an enlightened citizen. Because we believe in the law and order, we believe in humanity, so sometimes we don't hurt anybody physically. But not hurting anybody mentally and emotionally also is an ability to cause as little harm as possible. This is again an enlightened mind, a spiritual intelligent person. Our Guru Pramukh Swami Maharaj, whose centenary celebrations we are celebrating this year, it will be a 30 day festival in Ahmedabad on 600 acres of land. On the SG highway, more than 2000 volunteers, 100 saints are working at the moment when I am talking to you this Sunday morning on the site. From 15th of December this year, 2022 to 13th of January, 2023. We will have six huge domes. Each dome can sit 2,000 people in the auditorium sitting. For exhibitions, a dome will ha house an exhibition on family values, then anti-addiction drive, then Azadi Kamrut Motsa, then the life and works of Pramukh Swami Maharaj. Because Pramukh Swami Maharaj in his lifetime, now with certain statistics, you would be surprised and amazed what Pramukh Swami Maharaj did upon this earth. In a span of 45 years from 1971 to 2016, in a span of 45 years, he contributed 1300 institutes of social service upon this planet. No person in the world, in this population of 7 billion today, has constructed, successfully administered, and today, in the service of society, 1300 charity hospitals, hostels, schools, colleges, community centers, sanskar kendras, hari mandirs, mandirs and akshardam. How many of you have been to Swaminan Akshardam at Delhi or Ahmedabad, Gandhinagar? Just raise your hands. All of you. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was the creator of Akshardha. 1300 hospitals, hostels, schools and colleges. I was just talking two days back at Naratko, the young, that is the next generation of the builders of Mumbai. Just two days back at Taj Lens and in Bandra. I asked them a very simple question. Do you know any developer of or builder of Mumbai or any part of India? Forget 1300 projects on 1300 lands, even if he has just put his foot on 1300 barren lands with an intention that let me check out if something comes out of this and if I get this land, I need to do something on this. With this intention also, if somebody has put his foot on 1300 lands, just raise your hands and nobody did. Pramukh Swami Maharaj traveled to 18,000 villages, towns and cities in 60 countries of the world. Not for sightseeing. Eh? He visited US 22 times. Never visited 
the uh, studios never visited hollywood never visited disneyland nothing he was always there to uplift humanity in all walks of life pramukh swami maharaj read and answered 7.5 lakh letters in his lifetime at an unbelievable average of reading and answering 70 letters a day without a sunday for 45 years imagine you working in the <coughs> In the corporate world, tomorrow Monday morning when you go to your office and open your office mailbox and you have 25 mails to answer before lunchtime in the first half, what happens to you? What happens to you? Pramukh Swami Maharaj answered 70, 70 letters a day and all responsible answering, not just blessings. All important issues of personal life, family life, social life, professional life, people used to write to him. And expecting, and Pramukh Sai Maharaj also writing a clear cut answer, yes or no about it, whether to go for it or not. Responsible answering. So, 7.5 lakh letters, it is again a Guinness Book of World Records. Let me tell you in between, Pramukh Sai Maharaj's name is for six times in the Guinness Book of World Records. He could appear another 10 times. He was never interested. He initiated 1200 saints like us into sainthood. Out of them, 750 of them are graduates, postgraduates, chartered accountants, doctors and engineers. Out of them, 150 of them are born American and British citizens. Out of them, more than 50 have studied from Stanford, from Harvard, from Carnegie Mellon, from Yale, from Kilong. We have saints at the age of 26 and 27 who have worked with Microsoft, with Google, with NASA and left aside $1.5, $200,000 of salary and full time in, this, in the service of society and God here. I told you that you don't think that you won't go, 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 you won't go. लोग ज्यादातर जब संत को देखते हैं तो प्रथम ये विचार आ जाता है कई लोगों को सभी को नहीं कई लोगों को आ जाता है कि ये बेचारा का पहले तो वो बेचारा बन जाता है ये बेचारा का कुछ चला नहीं होगा जमा नहीं होगा ठीक पढ़ाई नहीं की होगी घर से भगा दिया होगा इसलिए यहां के संत होके बैठ गया ऐसा नहीं है बीएपीएस इज अ डिफरेंट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन I come from BAPS, which is one of the largest NGOs of the world. We have got a permanent status in the United Nations as an NGO. Every Friday, our representative sits in New York, in the UN. So, this is a different organization. We have a seven-year probation period before he gets saffron. And a full permission form signed by both the parents. None of you have in your institutes or corporate set up a seven year probation period. So he's fully scrutinized. And thereafter, he is launched into saffron and then into activities anywhere in the world that our centers are. Such 1200 saints, Pramukh Sai Maharaj initiated, 55,000 volunteer force. In the festival that we are celebrating in December and January, we have got 40,000 registered for one month, two months and three months. Absolute full day selfless service. And for that the developers and builders of Ahmedabad has very happily, just in a half an hour meeting, considered us, considered us 8,500 2BHK and 3BHK apartments for these two months, for our volunteers to stay. Pramukh Swami Maharaj did lofty work upon this earth, unbelievable. For his 1300 institutions that he set up. You all might be associated with some NGO, some social service. So you know what happens to run one institute or one activity in an NGO. Isn't it? What is 1300? And so Guinness Book of World Records writes for Pramukh Swami Maharaj that he is the master builder of the 20th century. And you saw 110 acres of Akshardham in Delhi. 110 acres of Akshardham in Delhi. Just two days back, I was with uh, the doyen of the 
Builders and Developers Association of Mumbai, Mr. Niranjan Hiranandani. He personally interviewed me in the session and after that we were talking. I said, Niranjan Bhai, if somebody gives you like 110 acres of land on the banks of Yamuna in Delhi, what would you do with it? Swami, don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Pramukh Swami Maharaj started the project at the age of 80 in the year 2000. Finished it in five years at the age of 85. Two years hence, at the age of 87, he starts a project on 265 acres of land in America, Akshardham, which our Guru Hari Mansai Maharaj will inaugurate two years hence in the August of 2024. And knowing the activities, the Sheikh of Abu Dhabi, His Royal Highness Sheikh Zayed, gifted us BAPS 27 acres of land on Dubai Abu Dhabi Expressway, the Sheikh Zayed Expressway. And a beautiful Akshardham is coming up there, foundation level come up. Such Akshardham is coming up at Johannesburg in South Africa, at Sydney in Australia. So we are a worldwide organization. Pramukh Sai Maharaj created this institute single-handedly. He was a one-man organization. Ek vyakti sanstha the. Unke jeevan mein ye qualities humne baut nazdik se dekhi hai. Hum jo quality ki baat kar rahe hai, to cause as little harm as possible. Itni badi sanstha ke undisputed president. He was the president of BAPS for 65 years. Eh? From 21st May 1950 to 13th August 2016. 65 years he was the undisputed president. Unchallenged. No elections. No opposition. He was once at a tree plantation program. He took the sapling in his hand, sat on his, at that very place and was just about to put the sapling with a couple of politicians, MLAs, MPs around him, the press photography, everything around him. Pramukh Swami noticed a small ant there. He did not put the sapling. He, by the other hand, put his index finger in front of the ant. And just in traditional Gujarati, he said, Kiri ben mari jaswamda, And he picked up that ant on his index finger and put it on the ground and then put the sapling there. Cause as little harm as possible. When the cameras are flashing in front of you in the presence of dignitaries and you are the chief guest to, to notice an ant at that time and take care of it, requires spiritual intelligence to cause as little harm as possible and the attendant saints who attend Pramukh Swami has seen and they have experienced that at night time when he wants to see the clock see the alarm clock he would put the whole shit on his body and inside it with a battery and a torch he would see it just because the light should not disturb the else sitting, sleeping in the room. Cause as little harm as possible. This has been the lifestyle of great personalities. The seventh quality of a spiritually intelligent person on an enlightened mind is an ability to probe and ask fundamental questions. And the eighth quality is an ability to work against a convention. Ek manyata ke virudh ja ke bhi kaam karke dikhana. So these are the eight qualities of an enlightened mind. We need to check, we need to introspect and we need to raise our bar to have these qualities more in our lives. Again, just listing it out quickly, the eight qualities of an enlightened mind. First, flexibility. Second, self-awareness. Third, an ability to face and use the suffering of life. Fourth, an ability to be inspired by vision. Fifth, an ability to see connection between diverse things. Sixth, an ability to cause as little harm as possible. Seventh, an ability to ask and probe the fundamental questions of life. And eighth, an ability to work against a convention. These are the eight qualities of an enlightened mind. When we introspect, when we focus, when we keep our thought process and readings for this, we can be an enlightened mind. Otherwise, we'll be among the 1.5 lakh people who leave this earth every day. 
When I ask a simple question to all of you today, all of you would say yes. I want to ask that do we all want to leave this planet somewhat making it better than how we found it? Yes or no? Just if yes, just raise your hands. Thank you. We all want to, before we leave this planet, make some small positive improvement somewhere in some field than how we found it. Isn't it? That just doesn't come without spiritual intelligence, without enlightening your mind. Because that makes you more human. That makes you more moral. That makes you more spiritual. And that is how you enlighten your mind, enlighten the society and you are in a contributing mode. If you don't go for that, you go for only one thing, increasing your materialistic pleasures and materialistic possessions in life. And if you go only for that and nothing else, it is dog life, donkey life and cat life, nothing else. It is not a human life. Because money can buy you good houses, it does not have the power to convert that house into a home. Money does not have the power to convert a concrete house into a warm home, isn't it? Money can buy you good beds but cannot guarantee you a good sleep. Michael Jackson was sleeping on a bed worth 94,000 US dollars. But after taking 10 sleeping pills, he could hardly sleep for a couple of hours. So money can buy you good beds but cannot guarantee you good sleep. Money can buy you good medicines and a healthcare plan. It does not have the power to give you good health. Otherwise, why would Aditya Birla pass away at the age of 51 because of cancer? He had the best medicines, the best health care for him. So money can buy you good medicines and a good health care. Cannot guarantee you good health. Money can buy you good food, but not good health. Isn't it? <laughs> Along with that also, take it very wisely that money can buy you the best of branded cloths and jewelry, but cannot give you beauty and handsomeness. Even if you spend a lot of time in front of the mirror, it cannot give you. So money can buy you n number of things which can make you happy from a car to a house to materialistic possessions. At the same time there are n into n number, n raised to n number of things that money cannot buy which actually you need to become more happy. Can money buy trust? Otherwise, what happened in the last 72 hours here couldn't, shouldn't have happened. Money cannot buy trust. Money cannot buy sweetness in relationships, isn't it? Yes or no? Otherwise, there are every day 70 cases for divorces registered in Delhi. 70 to 80 in the family court in Mandra in Mumbai. And more than 100 in the twin city of Secunderabad and Hyderabad every day and you would be surprised to know that of the 78 divorce cases registered in Bandra in Mumbai 5% of them are of people above the age of 60 are bhai sahab 35 saal chale gaye 25 saal ki umra mein agar shaadi ki hai 35 chale gaye aur 10 15 ki baat hai waise bhi 75 mein ek wicket to girne hi wali hai chala le 10 15 and more surprisingly, like if you go into the reasons of it, they've analyzed this. Divorce lawyers have analyzed. See what happens when you don't have an enlightened mind, you don't energize your life. That is what we are talking about. Filing for divorce cases above the age of 60, what the hell did you do with your mind? You never enlightened your mind about human relationships, about life. Abhi God ko bhul jao. At least you must enlighten your mind for a good human life, isn't it? You are 60, 70, 80 years upon this earth. Again, 5, 10 plus minus with the grace of God. They analyze that why people about the age of 60 file for divorces. One among the principal five reasons you would be surprised. The speed of fan in bedroom. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha 
the temperature setting of AC in bedroom is one among the top five reasons for divorce in couples above the age of 60. I'm talking of the family court of Bandra in Mumbai, standing here in Mumbai. Both must practice if somebody wants the fan on one and somebody wants in five. Both must practice for three, isn't it? <laughs> CMP, common minimum program. <laughs> they must go for CMP. You know the second reason for divorce among elderly couples? I'm quoting word to word as written in the file cases. Inverted commas. Suddenly my spouse has lost the sense of dressing. <laughs> Is the second reason important one for divorce among elderly people. So again let me use the word, now I have the authority to use it, that what the hell did you do with your mind? The human mind, you did not enlighten it. Enlightening your mind energizes your life. Life out of all the readings, I've read more than 500 autobiographies and biographies. I've traveled to 30 countries, delivered more than 15,000 talks. Out of all my travels, reading and meeting people, I've designed a formula for a good human life, for an enlightened mind. The formula is TAC formula, T-A-A-C. T is tolerance. A is acceptance. Another A is apologies. And C is compromise. Everybody has to live with it. Raise your hand if you say yes. Sorry? You yeah, the tech formula TAAC. T is tolerance. A is acceptance. Second A is apologies. And C is compromise. Everybody has to live with this formula. Even made for each other couples of the town, if they don't apply tech formula, there are divorces in made for each other couples as well. Yes or no? Tolerance, acceptance, apologies and compromise is a way of life. For that, I teach the 40, 30, 20, 10 principle. Again that, this principle I have designed of all my talks and readings. The 40, 30, 20, 10 principle. 40, 30, 20, 10 together is 100. What is that? Of all the works that you have decided in your life and all the relationships that you have started in your life, spouse, neighbors, friends, working colleagues, social, or at your club, at your or NGO of all the relations that you have started and all the work that you have started 40% of it will go your way enjoy it the way you have decided to make it happen it will happen that's God's grace on every human being 30% of all the work that you have decided and 30% of all the relationships there you have started it will need extra maintenance to keep going You can, at this very moment when I'm talking, start introspecting so far of your life. Of all the work and the relationships that you have started, 30% will need extra maintenance, extra inputs, just to keep it running and make it happen. So that is 40 plus 30 is 70%. Now listen carefully. Here comes the start of the enlightened mind to live a good human life. Because 20% of all the work that you have decided in your life and 20% of all the relationships that you have started in your life are bound to get spoiled. Accept it. Now introspect. 20% are bound to get spoiled. Kaam bigrega or relationships pure ho jayenge. Am I right or wrong? This is a fact when we don't accept this. We lose our human life and thus human values. An enlightened mind accepts this. So he energizes his life by not going into depressions and setbacks. Accept it. That this happens. And this is a formula for 7 billion population upon this earth. It is a part of everybody's life. 
20% of all the work and relationships that you have started are bound to get spoiled. Accept it. So this brings it to 90. Last 10%, 10% of all the work that you have decided in your life are bound to bring you heavy losses. And 10% of all the relationships that you have started are bound to get converted into competition or enmity. Jigar Jan Mitra Jani Dushman Ban Jate. Hayana Jigar Jan Mitra Jani Dushman Ho Jate. That happens. So, this is the principle of 40, 30, 20, and 10. Well, acceptance of this principle stabilizes you. Kabi koi relationship bigde to give it three chances in a span of six months from your side. If it doesn't come back on the track, leave it, forget it, and most importantly, delete the number from the mobile. So that again and again when you scroll and see that name and number, you don't go into a stressful situation of mind. Apne aap se prayatna kar lena. Teen baar prayatna kar lena. Sabandh sudharne ke liye, bigde huye sabandh ko sudharne ke liye, chhe mahine tak, har do mahine ek prayatna jaru karna. That is the human part of you. That is an enlightened mind from your side that you kept aside ego to improve the relations. Lekin phir bhi agar na sudre, to tell a big bye, Wish him or her a great life. Turn your face around and most importantly, delete the number from the mobile. I am giving you very practical solutions of life. Of an enlightened mind. Very practical. So this makes you an enlightened mind. So tolerance, acceptance, apologies and compromise. As simple as that. If I ask you that anybody sitting in the auditorium can raise their hand and tell that so far in my life, everything in my home, in my family, in my relationships and at my work has happened as per my choice. Anybody can raise their hand? The first one to say no is Nanik ji himself. <laughs> Perhaps the senior most person here. Dr. Kain says no, Dr. Kulin says no. So the elders, when they say no, you all definitely would say no. It is always an acceptance and compromise. Accept the people in your life. For that, I give a very practical solution. You might be having 500 and 1000 and 1500 and 2000 names and numbers in your mobile. Select 25. Keep a good high hello or good relationship with all. But select 25. For this 25 people I want in my life anyhow. Even if they make a mistake, I will overlook it. It is for my happiness that I have selected this 35. So don't 25. So don't see the faults of theirs. This is an enlightened mind that energizes your life because according to Harvard study, they had a survey in more than 110 countries across five continents, across caste, creed, color, religion. And the question asked to 100,000 families was. What according to you is the greatest joy upon this earth? And more than 67% of the respondents, they say, according to us, enjoying great relationships, spending quality and quantity time with your near and dear ones, whom you love and respect, who loves and respects you, is the greatest joy upon this earth. This is a Harvard study. So if we want to, rather let me ask you, do we, do we want to enjoy this greatest joy upon this earth? Of spending quality and quantity of time with our near and dear ones, whom we love and respect and who loves and respects us. For that, select 25 from that 1500. 90% of your relationship time should be with those 25 and rest 10% with the rest 1475. Then you will enjoy relationships in life. And that 25, no faults with them. No ego with them. Nothing. Their 25 is you, one soul in 25 bodies. That is called acceptance in life. That is called compromise in life. Even if they do something wrong, you are not supposed to see their fault. Why? Because you have decided to keep him or her in your life. 
you have decided that i want that person in my life from spouse to relations to relatives to maybe working colleague maybe a neighbor maybe a friend whatever those 25 people keeping those 25 in your life lifetime overlooking all their faults is an enlightened mind to energize your life only an enlightened mind can do that otherwise if we are given a question paper that i list 10 people 25 people 50 people from your mobile contact list and write a fault of theirs against their name you would ask only one or can i write more <laughs> only one or can i write more and we all can write more than one isn't it choice is yours but make a wise choice so you stand a good chance for a great change in your life this is called an enlightened mind that you make a wise choice in life day in and day out wise choices not just talented and intelligent choices they are the primary steps ultimate step is to make a wise choice in life that is an enlightened mind so such enlightened minds they energize their life and you live a wonderful and a great life because at the end of your life at least you must be satisfied with your life isn't it you must be able to put your hand on your chest and tell yourself yes i lived my life at least that should happen isn't it yes or no that should happen and for that this enlightenment is absolutely a must the tech formula and the 40 30 20 10 principle you master that and you are an enlightened person upon this earth it is as simple as that i just finished in the last five seven minutes what does an enlightened mind do practically what we were talking about thinking and accepting what does he practically do the first important aspect of practical doing of an enlightened mind is Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the whole world is my family. Wherever, wherever I can contribute and help, I will. Wherever I can't, I will wish and pray. But I will always be in a contributing mode. Enlightened minds are givers, they are not takers. Enlightened minds are givers and they are not takers. And so they enjoy their life. Pramukh Sami Maharaj did not have a bank account. We in BAPS, none, none of us saints, we have bank accounts. We don't touch money. We don't keep money. I have been talking since 24 years in national, international seminars and conferences. I am not charged. I am not charging a single penny for my talks. Today also I have not charged. <laughs> Just lightly I am telling you, I don't charge a single penny for my talks. Because my Guru Prabhu Swami Maharaj and Mahan Swami Maharaj has taught me to be in a contributing mode to the society 24 7 365 80. You got the formula which I said. 24 7 365 80. 80 means the 80 years of your life. Those who perform by talent and intelligence are in the newspapers are in the books and those who perform wisely by spiritual intelligence with an enlightened mind they are on the pages of the hearts of people inspiring generations and generations we on our birthday one week before that we have to message people that i have a party on this day evening and you have to join Right or wrong? And Pramukh Swami today is not physically present upon this earth. His 100th birthday celebrations and 40,000 youngsters, male and female, boys and girls, they have registered for physical service on the site for one month, two months. Pramukh Swami has not given a message to this 40,000. He lived an enlightened life and so is an inspiration for generations to come. Because he lived his motto, in the joy of others lies our own. Contributing mode. In the joy of others lies our own. He used to say that make your character strong and try to infuse character values in the lives of people around you. Contributing mode. 
So that makes an enlightened mind. Practically, it is this. If you don't remember anything in the talk today, anything, take this one message with you. 24 7 365 80 i want to be in a contributing mode i want to be a giver and not a taker and this helps you i'm into the last two minutes of my talk this helps you more and more towards being the best human being the best version of yourself this is more achieved by your faith in god not that I'm a man of spirituality that I'm talking you faith in God. I'm a man of science and I'm a man of spirituality both. I finished my engineering 30 years back. So I'm a man of both. I tell you that more than 50,000 research papers have been presented by men of science. That is scientists in national international conferences that how some element of spirituality practically and physically done like prayers like chanting the holy name like meditation helps you physically mentally and emotionally university of columbia latest research just one year back let me share with you university of columbia did, did a survey on a group of people actually two groups of people for 30 years and they came out with the survey conclusion paper just a year back one group of people were such that they used to visit religious places once a week once a month or many of them every day second group of people were such they never visited any religious places for 30 years the university of columbia studied their lifestyle their natures their way of living after 30 years they write in the conclusion paper you can find this on the website of the university of columbia first thing those people who were regular visitors at a religious place they had 40 percent less chance of a heart ailment or a cardiac arrest than those not visiting isn't this beneficial in life Second, those people who are regular visitors at the religious places had 70% less chance of a domestic violence at home than those not visiting. Isn't this an enlightened mind? Isn't this a good human living? Third thing, those people who are regular visitors at religious places, their children were 25 to 35 percent better at academics than the children of people or families not visiting isn't this an enlightened mind and a good human living fourth those people who are regular visitors at religious places had overall 70 to 75 percent better health conditions than those people not visiting isn't this a good human living this is how you energize your life. So visiting a religious place regularly every day or once a week or once a month has impact on the academics of your children, has impact on your better health, has impact on your better heart, has impact on your better relationships with your family members back home. That is you are less on domestic violence. This all gives you a good human living and it is ultimately the outcome and the fruit of an enlightened mind because and that enlightened mind is energizing your life from the health point of view it is energizing from the academic point of view it is energizing from the relationship point it is energizing as simple this three is heaven on earth isn't it but we have a different definition let me end with it what is heaven on earth and what is hell on earth we don't feel that such enlightened life, enlightened mind and thus this living is an heaven on earth. What we feel heaven on earth is a combination of five things. And hell on earth is a combination of five things. Hell on earth is Indian salary. A combination of five things. Sir. Indian salary. Chinese house because there people sometimes live in boat houses. They say German food, American car, and a British wife. If you get a combination of these three, it is five, it is hell on earth. Indian salary, Chinese house, German food, 
American car and a British wife. Because they say in Britain, the three W's they change any time, weather, wine and wife. In Britain, three W's they change any time, weather, wine and wife. So I probably feel, this is my assumption, that they started the search engine with WWW. <laughs> it's just a lighter moment apart. And the reverse of it is heaven on earth. American salary. If you are paid in dollars, if you are in dollars. American salary. A British house, nice cozy house. German car, Merck, Audi, a German car, Chinese food, an Indian wife. <laughs> this is heaven on earth if you have the combination of this five. I can do this now. American salary, British house, German car, Chinese food, and Indian wife. It is heaven on earth. <laughs> we have these definitions. I don't go against it, I don't mind it. This is materialistic and worldly. An enlightened mind transcends about this and that transcending is two things that I said contributing mode and faith in God my innermost prayers for all of you thank you very much for patiently listening to me thank you very much uh, Swamiji some interactive questions which we have received uh, Chintan will read them out. Uh, Jai Swami Narayan to everyone. We have received a few questions and still if you have any, uh, you have this chits which you can uh, uh, give it to the volunteers and we will direct the question to Swamiji. Uh, uh, Swamiji, a uh, very interesting question has come up. Uh, Swamiji, you were practicing engineering. What made you change the life and get enlightened? Well, if you look at the 100 top billionaires upon this earth, 70 or 75 of them are not in the field of working what they study. So what I mean to say is that, uh, academically you can be different, practicing you can be different. And sometimes, above all this, if you go into the stock markets, you've been achieving different. <laughs> so first of all, fields can be any, but let me tell you very simply, what is academics? What is education? Education is that which remains with you when you have forgotten everything that has been taught to you. So, a developed mind. The outcome of education is a developed mind, not just texts. Three things I saw in the life of Pramukh Swami Maharaj. First, the purity of his personal life. Second, his selfless zeal for society. And third, his profound faith in God. These three things inspired inspired me and of course all of us and so we are here. Thank you. Uh, this question was from Rekha Solanki. Uh, the next question is from Jeshri Chaudhary. What if people misunderstand us and how to control our anger if you can? If people misunderstand you, as I said, of applying the tech formula, first tolerate a bit. Today the tolerance has gone down to level zero. One of the leading district magistrates of family court. We asked him for an interview in one of our shivirs. Like more than 3000 people were there in, in attendance in that shivir. And he had heard more than 30,000 family disputes in his court during his entire tenure. And given decisions in 30,000 family disputes. We asked him that what according to you, according to your experience, is the biggest reason for family disputes. Understanding ki baat na? To pehle family pe baat karte. Misunderstandings in family members, between family members. Because a person, that experience, 30,000 family disputes, he has heard the arguments of both the parties in his court. And he has given judgments on that. So he was the right person to be asked this and he was he 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 possesses the authority to answer it. He said that tolerance has gone down to level zero. Nobody wants to tolerate even the slightest of mishappening in and around him or her. But we don't introspect that sometimes with our casual speaking, casual behaviors, casual attitudes, casual facial expressions, casual body language, sometimes we hurt the feelings of other people also. We never know that. 
So first thing we have to develop tolerance. When there is a misunderstanding, somebody misunderstands us. Yes. First, tolerate. Tolerate for a few days. Tolerate for a few weeks. Give the other person chance to introspect that he is doing something wrong. Without that, just you roll up your sleeves and start fighting. Sometimes I give a very practical solution to the infightings in the family. Sometimes within the family, the shouting starts, erupts like an earthquake. Especially between the mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. I was I was like thinking over this, like why such long names? We have short names, right? uncle, dad, mom. Why this long name? Mother dash in dash law, daughter dash in dash law. Why these long names? After giving a deep thinking to that, I came to a conclusion that this relationship naturally has to go towards law. <laughs> so it is daughter-in-law. Mother, I'm just joking, a huh? lighter moment. Then the second question arises in my mind. Second question is, a daughter becomes daughter-in-law, mother becomes mother-in-law, father becomes father-in-law, son becomes son-in-law, brother becomes brother-in-law, sister becomes sister-in-law. Wife never becomes wife-in-law. <laughs> Why? She is the law. <laughs> she is the law in the house. Just a lighter moment, what I mean to say when it comes to misunderstanding, first tolerate. Because he or she is either your family member or a friend. See, misunderstandings don't happen from unknown people. This question is from misunderstanding happening from a known person. More than that, from a close person. Isn't it? So True. first, you have to give the person who has misunderstood you enough time and space to rethink about his understanding. After that period is over, and the situations don't improve, sit, putting aside ego, sit with the person and say that I feel that there is a small dip in our relationship. Maybe there is some misunderstanding created. I as a friend genuinely ask you that if there is a misunderstanding, open out. Because relationships matter more than ego. This practical step by you towards the person who has misunderstood, misunderstood you, tells about you that you value relationship more than your ego. That is again the tech formula, acceptance and compromise. And I tell you, 90% of your relationship yeah. issues get solved by this. These two things. Again, both things in one word. Give time and space to the person who has misunderstood you, misunderstood you by, by tolerating the initial days of misunderstanding. Second, when the situations don't improve, start an initiative. Be proactive from your side to solve the issue. And if after this doesn't happen, I have given you the third step. For six months, three times. Hmm. And the situation doesn't improve, turn around, big bye, wish him or her a great life, and most importantly, <laughs> <laughs> Swami ji, the next question is very much connected. Uh, what is ego? Please elaborate on it. Sorry? What is ego? Please. Uh, ego in one line is, you always feel that I am superior. But, now listen this one sentence. All of us have an experience that every third person besides us is in some way superior to us. Maybe in looks, maybe in intelligence, maybe in academics, maybe in worth, maybe in business, maybe in, maybe in social connectivity. Every third person sitting beside us is in some way more superior to us. In some way. In some way you will be. Do you accept this? Just raise your hands if you say yes. All of you accept this. That every third person besides you is in some way superior to you, in some way. Isn't it? Keeping this fact in your conscious mind 24, 7, 65, 80, you will become humble. Yeah, I am boasting about what I am boasting about, I am the third person superior to And second thing, records are created to get broken. So, what do you think about it? That I have done this, so the next PD is not going to be able to do it. 
day before yesterday our wicket keeper rishabh pant broke 17 year old record of the wicket keeper mahendra singh dhoni of the fastest century by a wicket keeper in a test match 17 year old mahendra singh dhoni's record was broken day before yesterday when gavaskar played all the records of gary sobers were broken even 29 centuries of donald bradman was broken when sachin came all the records of gavaskar he broke now when virat kohli is in he is like almost 70 80% has broken all records of sachin to kahan ego raha kisi ka aur sabse acha visiting place kahan hai pata hai ego todne ke liye the big baron palaces of rajasthan oh or any place of this world ke yahan ek waqt raja hua karte the badi satta unki hua karti thi badi पावर थी उनके पास मिलिट्री थे आज खंडेर है तो आपका और मेरा क्या रहने वाला है एंड यू नो आफ्टर वी पास आउट देर विल ओनली बी अ फोटोग्राफ इन द हैंग ऑन द वॉल फ्रेम एंड दैट टू टिल द टाइम ओनली व्हेन देर आर पीपल इन द फैमिली हु हैव सीन यू फिजिकली द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन आफ्टर दैट ये इंटीरियर्स में जरा ठीक नहीं लग रहा उतार दो उसको तेरे बाप ने नहीं बनाया था प्रोग्राम तुझे तो इनहेरिटेंस में मिला है ये तेरे बाप ने बनाया लेकिन इंटीरियर ठीक नहीं लग रहा है उतार दो उसको अंदर कमरे में रख दो होता है कि नहीं उतार देते हैं तो कहने की बात है ईगो रखने की कोई जरूरत नहीं ईगो आप रख सकते हो और आपको इजाजत है यू हैव द राइट टू कीप ईगो इन ओनली वन कंडीशन एंड दैट कंडीशन इज If you have gained victory over death, वो तो है नहीं Then we don't have the right to keep ego. Thank you. Thank you, Swami ji. Uh, very interesting. Next question: uh, How to strengthen our faith in God? Yeah. To strengthen your faith in God, you have to do something practical. I was asked this question at I am Bangalore after my talk in the open questionnaire by the faculty and the students together. I said when you discuss science and when you practically use science which you enjoy more for example discussing science theory and enjoying practical science like a refrigerator practical science like an ac in a hot summer day practical science like an automobile practical science like a laptop the practical science like a mobile phone so instead of discussing science you may discuss if you are a scientist but practical science the products of it gives you more joy comfort and happiness than discussions of science in the same way don't go into the deeper discussions of science and religion practically do it i give you one example university of columbia those who were regular visitors to religious places had this benefits you have to do something practical only then you will enjoy and strengthen the word used is strengthen your faith in god sitting back home just thinking of it and you don't say only if i see him some day if he reveals me then i'll start believing in him see the principle is worldly things you first see and then believe heavenly things first believe and then see the process is reverse the formula is different formula is altogether different how can you apply this formula of the worldly sense in the heavenly sense worldly is first see and then believe heavenly is first believe and then see how many of you want to see god right now जिनको भगवान देखने अभी हाथ ऊंचा करे इससे भी कमा दे तो ना कहो कि भाई नहीं हो सकता नहीं देख सकते मैंने प्रश्न पूछा है देखना है किसी को सी आई टेल डू यू सी द सन एवरी डे शास्त्र में सूर्य देव लिखा है चलो वो भूल जाओ शास्त्र की बात नहीं मानते क्योंकि सेक्युलर हो इंटेलिजेंट हो पढ़े लिखे हो वो बात भूल जाओ वॉट इज दैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ गॉड वो पहले जाना है गॉड इवन इफ वन गॉड वॉन्ट्स टू रिवील हिमसेल्फ टू यू यू शुड नो द क्वालिटी ओनली देन यू विल नो हिम 
character of God is two things, power and love. See the power of sun. Is there any replacement to it? Tomorrow morning if the sun doesn't rise, let us start with a theory. When we were in 8th 9th standard, we were studying the Suppose A is not equal to B. At the end of the rider, we prove A is equal to B. Did you study algebra? Mein. Geometry. So let us start the rider. Suppose sun doesn't rise tomorrow. Will all the scientists of NASA coming together, all the scientists of ISRO coming together, will all the scientists of the European Space Agency coming together, can make the sun rise? Second alternate. If you burn everything that you can burn upon this earth, from cloth to oil, will the morning fall from the dark night? Morning will fall only when he rises from 9 crore miles from here. That is more than 14, 000, 14 crore kilometers from here. And just two rays on this earth and he will illuminate the whole earth. Power! No alternate to it. Every second upon the surface of sun. I'm talking scientific about eh, faith in God. Every second, every human second on the surface of earth. 60,000 crore tons of helium gets transformed into hydrogen. And that is why this heat, this light. Figure 60,000 crore tons. Har second me. Yeh me chalu kiya sun ki baat, usme kitna gas convert ho gaya, wo to hamare calculator me nahi, supercomputer me bhi nahi aata hai. So is NASA controlling that reaction? Little children, our scientists controlling that reaction. Somebody is controlling. Agar samad lo maa 60,000 se kuch 70,000 tak pounch gaya to, yaha temperature will go to 55 and 60. None of your AC will work. Somebody is controlling the temperature. I was talking to 400 scientists at Taj Land and Spandra, like about seven, eight years back. The same question problem. I asked them a very simple question. Earth is rotating at its definite speed, isn't it? From tomorrow, it starts staggering again, suppose. Staggering chalu hua. Toh kar kya lenge, aap mujhe ye batai. Kyoki staggering chalu hua, toh kya hota pata hai? Aaj aapka din 20 ghante ka rehta hai, raat 4 ghante ki rehti hai. Kal aapka din 1.5 ghante ka ho jayega, raat 1.5 ghante ki ho jayegi. Karenge kya aap? Khaenge kab? Soenge kab? और सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पेमेंट कब करेंगे एम्प्लॉइज को तनख्वाह कब देंगे क्योंकि डेट ही जारी नहीं होती है डेट कैसे सेट करेंगे आप और परसों क्या होता है 10 घंटे का दिन 24 घंटे की रात उसके बाद चौथे दिन क्या होता है 18 घंटे की रात 6 घंटे क्या दिन स्टैगरिंग चालू हुआ ना पृथ्वी का तो सब साइंटिस्ट मिलके उसको स्क्रू और ड्राइवर लेके ठीक कर पाएंगे ऐसी हजारें बात है which you can challenge the scientist and I openly challenge. There is no solution to it. You have to believe in the work of providence. By through science. Nanaji, I asked a simple question once again to the scientist. In such a conference, I was a speaker. So, something was asked. I said, this name is your gravitation. Ka to naam apne gravitation hai. The energy that pulls all of us. And we remain grounded. Not egoistically, physically. And we remain grounded. This is a gravitation pool. This is a name of the scientist. This is a force. 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 For me, scientists, a simple example. If I catch your hand and pull you towards me, I am using some energy. Yes or no? I am using some energy, isn't it? The whole world, all the population upon this earth, humans, animals, they are pulled towards the earth. That is down. That means the energy is used. Hoti hai. Yes or no? Science says yes. You say yes or no, tell me. So use hoti hai, to refill kaise hoti hai? Now nobody of you will have answer. No scientist has the answer to this. So aapko kaise hoga? Agar use hoti hai, to refill honi chahiye na? Wo refill kaise hoti hai gravitation? Gurudva karshan refill kaise hota hai? Kaun karta hai? And if you say no energy is not getting used, then you are proving science wrong. Entire science goes wrong. 
डॉक्टर क्यों लागे नो साइंटिस्ट और मैन ऑफ साइंस सो फार हेज बीन एबल टू एक्सप्लेन ग्रेविटेशन वेर इट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम हाउ इट इज मेंटेनिंग दैट पुल इट इज गेटिंग यूज और नॉट दो व्यक्ति पृथ्वी पे थे जितना ग्रेविटेशन था दोनों ठीक चल पाते थे आज सेवन बिलियन है सब ठीक चल पा रहे हैं किसी ने ऐसा सुना कि और न्यूजीलैंड में वहां जाते हैं तो वहां तो ग्रेविटेशनल पुल बहुत ज्यादा है दो फीट अंदर चले जाते हैं ग्राउंड में और ये बाजू जाते हैं लेटिन अमेरिका में तो वहां एमेजोन में ग्रेविटेशन कम है तो दो फीट ऊपर उठते हैं ऐसा कुछ सुना इक्वल ग्रेविटेशनल पुल ऑन द एंटायर अर्थ वेर एवर यू गो somebody is maintaining it never keep an egoistic attitude i can prove you the presence of god i can prove you the doings of god absolutely scientific when you understand this you convince your logical mind to have faith in god and the last thing to have faith you need heart not the mind as simple as that aapne jab shaadi ki thi तब माइंड का यूज किया था हाथ का वेरी वेरी प्रैक्टिकल क्वेश्चन जब शादी की थी तब बुद्धि का उपयोग किया था या हृदय का बोलिए एक ही जवाब है आपके पास हाथ किसी फ्रेंड ने बोला होगा यार ये ठीक आपकी वाइफ आपके साथ जमती नहीं है हाइट में कम है काली है चश्मे वाली जो कुछ भी बोला होगा और रिवर्स भी बोला होगा किसी ने अगर नहीं बोला होता किसी ने सोचा होगा तो भी आपने क्या कहा जो कुछ भी तू बोले माई हार्ट हैज गॉन दैट इज अंडेड तो एक स्पाउस के सिलेक्शन में भी आप माइंड यूज नहीं करते हो हार्ट करते हो ये बड़ा सिलेक्शन में भी हार्ट ही चाहिए माइंड नहीं चाहिए थैंक यू सुपर इफ यू आर लविंग दिस साइड ऑफ हिज ही इज वेरी एक्टिव ऑन ऑल सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड आई फॉलो हिम आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन आप लोग भी प्लीज इफ यू लाइक दिस यू कैन डू दैट एक्चुअली लेट मी क्लैरिफाई नन ऑफ आर बी ए पी एस सेइंग्स आर ऑन एनी सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स दिस इज वन ऑफ आर नॉर्म्स but uh, naturally it happens that wherever i talk or uh, we say in stock or have this sessions it goes uploaded and then it goes viral on youtube we don't have any personal social media accounts right Thank and i am sure this even this is going to go viral it's uh, okay sir a uh, very interesting question i i am sure a lot of teenagers will also uh, relate to it uh, it's from mr rajesh doshi how to train our mind to keep away from the rat race in the material world especially when we have people around running it Uh, running the rat race for getting more money and fame out of everything first 25 years of your life go for the rat race you are here to have wonderful academics you are here to give all pleasures to your family you are here to have a good social connectivity you are here to contribute to the society this all you can do only you go for initial 25 years after your academics for a great rat race you have to earn money you have to make money you have to position yourself in the society you have to cement your place in circles in the society but when you touch 50 fir ye mo bolna ki abhi health to 35 jaisi lagti hai to aur 15 saal chala lo kya ye question zara is honge when you touch 50 then because you know 70 80 years fight and plus minus with the grace of god you have to be out of your rat race and absolutely focus on the contributing more in life so this is the answer to your question rat race se pehle se bar mein ye the students baithe hain na ye mat sochna ki yaar ye sab baat thodi adhyatmik baatein hain to kya zara introspection pehle 25 saal after your academics go full fledged we want to make india 5 trillion dollar economy by 2025 and the onus of that lies on your shoulders आप तो बता बुढ़ा जेवा थी गया नहीं डॉक्टर के नाम कहते ओनर्स ऑफ दैट लाइज ऑन द नेक्स्ट जनरेशन नानिक जी एम आई राइट सो यू हैव टू गो फॉर इट चैलेंज योर सेल्फ चैलेंज योर कॉम्पिटिटर्स एंड शो योर क्लास शो योर कैलिबर बट अ स्टेज कम्स वेन यू हैव टू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग द अदर वे द अदर वे इज बींग इन द रेट रेस इवन इफ यू विन यू आर स्टील अ रेट being in the rat race even if you win the race you are still a rat right after 50 you don't want to be a rat start in the contributing mode and that you have to exit the race somewhere 3 days back mukesh ambani handed over the reins of geo to akash at the age of 
everybody thinks of this this is an enlightened mind decision at the right time you have to give the reins to the next generation it is a must thank you thank you uh, swami ji the next question is from tejal piyush karya the it's last a- one i think so now because that session is like over time okay uh, i think it's the second last you mind if i take one more so i give one line answers to both fine okay perfect uh, with today's because running life just casually we are used to talking with clocks and calendars both so like right <laughs> with today's running life the t again again sorry again again yeah. uh the ne- uh, the next question is from tejal piyush karya it's on t double a c tag uh with today's running life the tag formula is practice less and less in the day to day life would you want to guide us with an easy formula to follow the tag leaving uh the e- uh, the ego aside well i feel that this is an easy formula whenever next i design a lesser one than this i'll again make a session with you <laughs> but this is a reality and this is a fact of life tolerance acceptance apologies and compromise this is how you live a peaceful life as simple as that the elders do agree with it or not absolutely so this is the best formula super ban uh, the last question i'm sure a lot of uh, youngsters here because uh, see yeah, sorry for interruption yes. batting good batting doesn't mean that you connect with every ball good batting also defines in itself and includes in itself which ball to leave and let it go to the wicket keeper that includes good batting that is part of good batting judgment and decision so you don't get out sometimes sticking at the crease is more important than scoring runs you have to see a pace bowler off કાની સ્પેલ પૂરી થઈ જાય ને પછી રનિંગ રન્સ લેસ આને એકવાર સી ઓફ કરી દેવો પડશે કારણ કે ઇઝ ડેડલી 